to the Percon's YouTube party, as it were. Uh, but honestly, you know, I just got this thing and uh, after being on a wait list for months. Now this channel is a passion project, so I sort of make videos whenever I'm inspired to and most importantly, when I've got the time. I admit that there's always a bit of a fear um, when a bunch of pro YouTubers have already made videos on it. Like, what's the point of me making one? But, you know, maybe that's the whole point. Uh, you could say that uh, about a lot of many creative endeavors like making music you know what's the point but that's part of the journey i think sometimes when you're doing something you love and you hit some bumps in the road uh, and you lose your motivation but that's when you just have to push through so this is my take on the best features of this new drum instrument by erica Synths. Now, Erica Synths claim that Percons is more than a piece of gear, more than a drum machine, but an instrument, a performance instrument. Now, a lot of companies will make this claim, but you know, most of them do fall short. Besides, only the test of time will tell whether it's a real viable instrument, right? It'll depend on musicians who adopt them and become expertly skilled at it. So when you claim something is an instrument like a piano or a guitar, which has been around for centuries, I think everyone needs to take a step back a little bit because it's a bold claim. It's something that only history and musicians will decide, right? Not necessarily a company or their sales team. But having said that, um, Perkins does have a lot going for it that perhaps uh, could stand the test of time. Procon's design approach isn't necessarily about inert precision or dialing things in exactly, like entering spreadsheet numbers. No, Procon's is all about feel and vibe, and I can see that this is deliberate in the design. There's no setting exact tempo, I mean, it's just a knob, there's no screen. Procon's compels you to listen first and tweak the sound. You can say that it's a hallmark of a lot of great instruments right now and in the past. This is kind of a given also, uh, and I don't take this for granted, but Percons also sound like it sounds great. Uh, it's up there with some of the best sounding analog sources out there in my humble opinion. So, you know, let's get that out of the way. So right out of the gate, if you want feel and vibe and soul, I mean, this really is it, right? Percons can just straight up like record, you know, knob movements. Uh, this feature is so wildly fun, just super fun and intuitive. Uh, and the way it's implemented is so musical because it's frictionless and you're listening for the changes, not like staring at a graph or a, a screen. Can you do this with a mouse and a keyboard in Ableton? Yes. Um, can you record MIDI movements on a controller and play back in a DAW? Well, yeah, sure, you know. But interacting with Percons uh, this way is way more fun and musical because you're listening, not staring at some screen or pixel pushing. Uh, it's not necessarily precise this way, although like the built-in MIDI feature uh, allows you to be able to, you know, get some precision. I think Percons really excels as an instrument uh, this way, uh, you know, more free. Uh, you want to listen and tweak and feel and listen some more. Uh, uh, to me, I think that's really the best feature about Percons and why I am so drawn to it. Percons has sort of a like a secret identity that you know like during the daytime Percons is this like mild-mannered drum machine but at night it's this like silky smooth 
or downright scary drone generating sound design sandbox. I think honestly I spent more time making sound design drones than using it as a drum box. If you open up the delay like all the way um, and just assign the LFO and with a bit of automation, uh, it can generate all sorts of interesting and complex soundscapes very quickly. The external effects send return integration uh, seems like an odd mechanical thing to get excited about, but I have to tell you, uh, for me personally, the way Percons deliberately use this very precious uh, real estate on board to either use the onboard um, uh, bucket brigade delay or integrate an external uh, effect source is like another thoughtful and meaningful design choice. You can't put everything on a piece of hardware, especially one that's meant as a performance device. What you choose and what you omit, those are powerful and very difficult design choices. And while I find that it's a bit of a bummer that if you do use the external send on one, it sort of overrides the onboard BBD, even though um, I wish you know there was ways to integrate both, I nevertheless you know, find that entire integration and workflow very compelling. Like peanut butter and jelly, uh, Percons and Microcosm is a, you know, magnificent combo. You can definitely get some silly, crazy sessions out of it. Uh, you know, here I've got the signal routed uh, using a small mixer to mix the wet signal from the Microcosm so that I can theoretically use both the onboard BBD uh, because it sounds so good, as well as the uh, external FX box here. It is super fun and so engaging, uh, you can get lost for days. It's hard to cut features, believe it or not. Uh, we as users tend to rattle off a laundry list of wish list of features. Why doesn't it have this? Why doesn't it have that? Uh, sometimes product makers like oblige this thinking to throw the kitchen sink at a product, which by the way, tends to dilute the experience and betrays a bit of the product maker's insecurity. But like all creative ventures, it's what you choose not to put in, right? That can be the difference. And trying to be everything, again, as I mentioned, usually tends to lead to mediocrity. Uh, this is incredibly hard uh, because I think everyone has an opinion and every reviewer has, I wish it had that. And you want to appeal to a, a large people as possible to sell your product. So it takes courage to be focused, to be minimalist. And as I've played with the Percons more and more, I see why they did some things and why they chose not to other things. For example, I had a small gripe that their other products, Centrix 2, didn't have a screen and it was, you know, debatable. Uh, but with Percons, it's very clear that it's the right thing for it to not have a screen because the instrument needs to be heard and not seen uh, necessarily. And when you make creative decisions, you're listening, uh, not looking at meters. Your ears are actually incredibly sensitive, right? And it can be trained to spot minute and nuanced differences. Uh, automate the knobs and now using graphs but with your emotions and if you're not good at it you practice it like any other instrument and if you are good at it then express it more and let your musicianship really shine through don't be stunted by graphs and curves ultimately only time will tell if percons truly is more than just a machine but an instrument uh, but so far i think it's well on its way